guys and welcome to the channel or actually welcome to the uh, the Musée de Louvre it's uh, très bien and today is Thursday it's four days away from the race four days including today Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday race day and today I want to talk about some things that you can do to kind of prepare your body or really like some last minute checks you can do when you have three full days before a major race <music> First thing I would say would be to get a massage. If you can't get like a physical, like a deep tissue massage, then the next best thing is a lacrosse ball. So painful. So the massage, I, I would recommend. I mean, it's not, it's not enjoyable, but it is beneficial. Just find someone who can take like their elbow or their thumb, or just who. It's, this isn't like a fun massage. It's like a find the most sore, painful spot in your leg or your butt, and just just push on it until it's really painful, and then just kind of wait until the pain goes away. Three nights away from the race, so you have three cycles of eight hours of sleep to repair any muscle damage that might occur during the massage. I mean, ideally you get the massage where you're like a week away, right? Um, I'd say three days, probably at the closest, unless it's like a less intense massage. You could just do the little crossbow thing, but oh man, it's so painful. Another thing is gonna be food. I'm not saying to like change anything crazy in your diet. Don't eat anything different than you normally would. Have like your normal, the normal stuff that you normally eat every day. The one thing you should do though, definitely three days before, preferably like five days before, is if you're, well make sure you're eating enough. So if you're normally in a caloric deficit or you're like counting your calories, this is where you would start to want to eat at your normal maintenance level. If anything, you might eat a little over that little maintenance level because you just want to make sure that your body is set up to recover during this period of time. So food, nutrients are like the things that kind of help you rebuild muscle tissue, strengthen bone density, keep all your little hormones regulated and stuff so you're happy and ding and like you have all the testosterone and all that stuff. So for sure three days away, preferably a week away, just get back to normal. And I've noticed with myself, if I'm doing like a big calorie cut, um, that first like day or two, like let's say I'm cutting like 500 to like a thousand calories a day or something for whatever reason, you know, those first, like the first day or two where I'm coming back into it, I like these crazy hunger swings and I get like extra glycogen. And this has kind of like been proven, like if you go into like a huge deficit and then you suddenly have like normal maintenance, you like, your body will kind of overstore a little bit of like calories. So you might feel like more waterlogged and stuff. So anyways, three days away, a week away from your target race, don't have any crazy diet stuff to see normal. And also kind of eat stuff that might make you feel a little, a little happy and feel good. So like, I like eating chocolate. <laughs> Last thing I would say to be conscious of would be your sleep and your gear. I think sleep goes without saying. Make sure this last week you're sleeping as much as you can. One of my favorite quotes is, we get faster when we're sleeping, not when we're running. And I think it's completely true. Like uh, at this point in your race, you've got a week or three days before your race, you know, all the training's already done. You can't really do anything more to get faster. Um, I said at the beginning of the week, you can do things to get slower for sure. Um, not sleeping or messing up your sleep schedule is one of them. So if you're trying to like change your sleep schedule for a big race, like the race starts at six, or you're trying to get up early or whatever, I would say this week, I almost don't worry about it. You wanna be completely fresh on the starting line. And then also, I don't know if you are like me, but I feel like most of us are the same. The night before a big race, we sleep like total crap or you almost don't even sleep at all. 
So it's like two days before the race, three days before the race, the week, three days before the race that the sleep is like the most vital. And the last thing with your gear, that's basically like your shoes and then your clothes. Make sure you test out your shoes before your race. Like if you watch this video, I talk about the beautiful, <sighs> Nike Zoom Strike LT4 is Nike about that sponsorship. I tested them in that workout, so I know I don't get any weird chafing spots on my feet or anything like that. So the shoes are good. If you guys are wearing like a new shirt or new pants or something, why not go for a run or two in them like a week before and make sure there's not any weird like chafing spots. Because when you're in the middle of a race, you, it's too late to put Vaseline on. You know what I'm saying? Come on, I'll show you guys a fun little Seco Park. And the last thing that you can't really prepare for, but you need to expect the unexpected, is the weather and then how you are going to feel. All you can do is kind of set your body up for success, but it's impossible to know how it's going to be on race day. So just go into it with an open mind. You could be doing six months of preparation and then you show up on the starting line and you feel like, Bleh. oh well. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Um, there's always more races to do in the future. And in weather, the only thing you can really do is kind of train in different conditions. But if there's a freak weather day in your city, sometimes on race day, like you show up and uh, maybe your city's been, had this perfect weather or this kind of weather for the last month. And then on that day, it's just like totally hot or it's like totally freezing and your body hasn't acclimatized or adapted to it. Oh well, you can be familiar with how your body is going to react. Like if you've trained in a humid climate before or if you've trained in snow or trained on ice. Anyways, I'm kind of going on a tangent. Please leave a like if you liked the video. Please subscribe. Become one of my subscribers. Oh, and also, if you like the food stuff, um, I made an Instagram channel that I'm actually doing terribly at publicizing. Um, it's called Dessert underscore run and it's basically like food and running and it's basically just like an excuse so like I'm like motivated to go out to different pastry shops and and buy stuff not like you need any more motivation but it's a good motivation you know what I mean so I'll link that below go follow on Instagram if you want to check it out and I'll see you guys tomorrow bye <laughs>